So, grade nine, lesson four. The opening prayer. May the wisdom of the all-compassionate one so shine within our hearts and minds this day, that we may be enlightened in our acts, thoughts and deeds, so shall we learn to be true, good and happy, and attain the spiritual peace. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya. <coughs> so under the Unit 1 heading, living in a community of persons. We have about civil society, media, and the church, well, and the temple, as it is. And a quote from Joe Biden, that no fundamental social change occurs because, merely because of government acts, that it it's because civil society, the conscience, conscience of a country, begins to rise up and demand change. <clears throat> Page 31. But first, I'd like to ask a volunteer to share his or her insights from Lesson 3, the previous lesson. So please answer and submit that. Right, we're going to watch the <clears throat> video, hopefully. This is running. Institutions are essential parts of any society. Think about it. Police stations, schools, hospitals, businesses like Walmart and Trader Joe's are all core parts of a community. In a sense, they impose structure on how individuals behave. For example, if all the laws that exist in our community disappeared, would I still have a normal day? <laughs> Probably not. People would be speeding down the street, looting my neighborhood coffee shop, and perhaps a stranger would be sleeping on my living room couch. All the things that I'm used to would be completely disrupted. Maybe a more reasonable example is, let's say all the schools had a new rule of no classes on Fridays. Then parents would have to figure out childcare for that day. Institutions and their rules definitively guide what we do. You may be thinking that you don't have a kid and maybe you don't need child care services. But in general, individuals are reliant on the institutions in their community. But is the reverse true? Do institutions need individuals? In general, they need lots of folks to contribute to allow them to function. But they don't typically need any one random individual. So there's a bit of an imbalance between institutions and individuals, if that makes sense. While they need individuals and are created by groups of individuals, they will continue even after the individual is gone. The concept of institutions may seem like a daunting idea, but try thinking of them as just a form fulfilling a need. Institutions meet the needs of society by filling expected roles and behaviors. For example, in order for society to continue, it needs people year after year after year. The family institution makes sure that there will be people to carry on the next generation. We know society needs a way to keep people healthy, so you have the medical institution. And society even needs a way to encourage innovation and progress, so you have universities. There are two views of institutions, a conservative view and a progressive view. The conservative view sees institutions as being natural, positive byproducts of human nature. For example, the institution of hospitals forms naturally from the activities of humans and naturally benefits them. The progressive view takes the standpoint that institutions are artificial creations that need to be redesigned if they are to be helpful to humanity. So perhaps you can see businesses as potentially harming society if they aren't reined in. Now, unfortunately, institution is one of those words that has a very different meaning to a sociologist than it does to the average person. We, average people, might think of just a business or a corporation when we hear the word institution. A sociologist, on the other hand, thinks of social structures when they hear the word institution. They think of governments, families, hospitals, schools, the legal system, religion, as well as businesses. Each of those parts of society continues on without regard to any individual. Governments continue even after the people within them turn over. Families continue from one generation to the next. 
laws continue on after the people who wrote them are long dead and buried. Hospitals, schools, businesses, all continue past the time span of any individual, and are not dependent on any one individual either. Okay, so there's the end of our video <clears throat> about institutions. So let me ask a few questions about that, and you can answer and submit them. Based on the video, what are institutions? Based on the video, what are institutions? So just as a guideline for your answers, Institutions are structures of society that fulfill the needs of the society. Not only are they essential to the society's needs, they also help to build the society itself. Yeah. <clears throat> now, another one. Well, what will happen if institutions are gone? No hospitals, yeah? no government uh, to organise things. Even the television stations, many of those I call considered institutions. No radio, national radio or news. So, what will happen? You answer and submit your own answers. I'm going to give you a guideline. That it is very possible that there will be chaos if institutions are gone or non-functioning in society. <clears throat> it's just a guideline, use your own ideas. Now I'd like to ask you students to read Unity in Belief, in Relief, sorry, <laughs> on pages 31, 32. There's also a paragraph above that section. This is the paragraph. In Lesson 2, it was stated that a community of a higher order should not interfere in the internal life of a community of a lower order. That's that principle of subsidiarity. And that we are one human family. Whatever our national, racial, ethnic, economic and ideological differences are, Okay, so that's the argument that there shouldn't be a kind of government and capital city that controls absolutely everything by one uh, race or, uh, or difference. Lesson four is going to discuss the structures or mechanisms of social order that govern the behavior of the people in our society. These structures or mechanisms of social order are called social institutions. Some social some social scientists yeah, uh, consider social institutions as the rules of the game, but more than mediating the rules that govern human behavior, social institutions must ensure that it is the human person who is their principal subject and object. That they are, it's basically that they are serving people, not just governing and creating institutions. We will also discover the significance of the civil society in uniting social values such as social justice, that's like the, the magistrates and the courts, economic viability, citizen participation, environmental protection, peace, gender equality. So read on to see how social institutions worked in the aftermath of Super Typhoon Yolanda. There's a picture of a typhoon ripping the roofs off of buildings and causing widespread destruction. 
Victories of Life. On 8th of November 2013, one of the strongest tropical cyclones hit the Philippines and devastated the province of Samar and Leyte. The super typhoon Yolanda killed a lot of people, destroyed infrastructure and has put a gargantuan challenge that's a very large challenge, not only to the Philippine government, but to other institutions as well, to deploy search and rescue efforts. In the aftermath of the typhoon, survivors were literally left with nothing but the shirts on their back. Food and water became scarce, which pushed the survivors to loot grocery stores. Uh, other business establishments and even abandoned homes. Fortunately, the police and military, despite suffering from death and losses themselves, established peace and order among the people. Obviously, the police and the military are two institutions. On to page 32. The national government attempted to deploy medical workers and relief goods to the affected provinces, but the extent of damaged roads and other infrastructure as well as the lack of electricity made it very difficult. Hence, rescue and relief efforts moved at a snail's pace. Um, yes. <laughs> I actually heard about someone who had a lot of relief goods to try to take into that area and they were stopped by the government because <laughs> there were laws and rules about flying and landing and everything, so it just shows. However, these did not deter the local government and other, in lo other social institutions to exert efforts and martial resources to assist the survivors. The Catholic Church and other non-governmental organizations, NGOs, run by faith-based organizations like Catholic Relief Services, Catholic Medical Mission Board, CMMB, Adventist Development and Relief Agency, ADRA, LDS Philanthropies, as Latter-day Saints, American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee, AJJDC, Samaritan's Purse, Salvation Army, Christian Children's Fund of Canada, MAP International, and World Vision raised money and aided in the disaster relief efforts. I noticed they didn't mention the Buddhist organization Suchi, which was one of the largest helpers in that area and still continues to be. Even private businesses, business institutions, deemed it important to help and engage in various activities that raised funds for the victims of Typhoon Yolanda. <clears throat> Local television networks did a telethon for donation pledges and accepted relief goods from generous donors. The relief goods were then repacked by volunteers and distributed to the affected provinces. Even other countries sent various forms of help, manpower, monetary relief, medical and rehabilitation to the Visayas. Samar and Leyte have since gotten back on their feet with the help and cooperation of various social institutions and the resilience of Filipinos. Okay, moving on then to the inflame. The society is bound by a principle of unity that goes beyond each of its members. As a group of persons, the society endures through time and various experiences. Hence, each person in the society owes loyalty to the communities to which he belongs and must also respect those in authority to dispense duties for the common good. From the experience of Typhoon Yolanda, various social institutions have worked hand in hand 
to establish peace and order, search for and rescue survivors, provide relief goods, and initiate rebuilding efforts. The national and local governments, military, police, business institutions, religious institutions, mass media, civil society and non-government organizations have all contributed to bring the various forms of support for the well-being of the typhoon victims. So then I'd like to ask you students the following questions. What is the story all about? Please answer and submit. And pause here. So guideline. The story is about various social institutions that worked hard to help the people affected by the storm. <clears throat> Another question. Why do you think the story is titled Unity in Relief? Pause there and you can make your answer. Here's a guideline. The story is titled Unity in Relief because various social institutions such as the Catholic Church and other non-governmental organizations, NGOs, run by faith-based organizations like Catholic Relief Services, Catholic Medical Mission Board, CMLMB, Adventist Development Relief and Agency, ADR, LDS and Philanthropies, American Jewish Amen Joint Distribution Committee, AJJDC, Samaritan's Purse, Salvation Army, Christian Children's Man, of Canada, MAP, and World Vision, raised money and aided in the disaster relief efforts. And there's a picture of that distribution aid going on. <clears throat> How can you apply the concept of unity relief into your personal life? Please answer and submit. Answers may vary, however, I'd like to point out that we are all called to lend a hand to those who need our help. And I'd like to explain to the class that our society is bound by a principle of unity that goes beyond each one of us. As a group of persons, our society endures through time and various experiences. Hence, each person in the society owes loyalty to the communities where he or she belongs and must also respect those in authority to dispense duties for the common good. I'd like to please ask you students to answer the reflection questions on page 33 and then solicit some volunteers to share their answers. First reflection question. Have you or anyone you know experienced a natural calamity? And can you name the social institutions that helped the community? Answer and submit. And two, can you think of other ways, aside from donating relief goods, to help people who were severely affected by natural calamities? <clears throat> Moving on, page 33 now. How can you support social institutions? Cite at least one specific example. Moving on to rediscover. Society. A society can be described as the aggregate people or the combined, the joined people living together in a more or less ordered community. The government and commerce are critical sectors of the society. However, an ideal society champions social values such as social justice, 
economic viability, active citizen participation, environmental conservation, peace, gender equality, and spirituality. When left to the government and commerce alone, such social values are prone to abuse, neglect, or inattention. Take, for example, an authoritarian government leader who wants to stay in power by keeping a tight rein on its citizens, controlling the media and hampering free speech, as well as trampling human rights. Another example is a mining company that destroys biodiversity and contaminates soil as well as groundwater to attain its objective of earning a hefty profit. Hence, a third sector of society is critical to ensure check and balance and bringing order in the community. The civil society serves as the third sector that, when mobilized, has the power to influence the actions of elected policy makers and businesses. It's a long sentence, let's just rewind that. The civil society, it's a healthy one, a healthy society, serves as the third sector. When mobilized, when it's in action and having its full effect, it has the power to influence the actions of policy makers, that's politicians, and also businesses. So the general public influences politicians and influences business when it's uh, working well. The civil society is the aggregate, that's the combined amount of non-governmental organizations and institutions that manifest the interest and will of the citizens. It includes the family and the private sphere the private sphere. The World Bank adds, the civil society refers to a wide array of organizations, community groups, non-governmental organizations, NGOs, labor unions, indigenous groups, charitable organizations, faith-based organizations, professional associations, and foundations. So it's a lot. Without a doubt, civil society builds social capital. So that's um, very valuable energy in society. Or a shared sense of identity, understanding, norms, and values which are then transferred into the political sphere and help to hold society together. That's a bit complicated, <laughs> a sentence. So what does it say? Without a doubt, civil society, those things like we were talking about, the family, and churches, and many things like that, society builds social capital. It means that the society is very valuable and it's also bonded together. And it's bonded together by, not by the police controlling you, but just by understanding what's normal and what's valuable. Like being kind and being polite and being honest. Those things are just held together and, that, and those values are communicated through schools and families and just generally among people. And that holds society together. <clears throat> In the global arena, this is also a long sentence, in the global arena, well-known civil society organizations include Amnesty International, the International Trade Union Confederation, the Worldwide Fund for Nature, WWF, and Greenpeace. So these are people who protect 
innocent lives. Like Amnesty International works to do with prisoners that are being held unfairly. Greenpeace protects things like dolphins and whales and seals from um, being killed and so on. <clears throat> It is imperative, that means very important, that the civil society's advocacies and actions operate within the framework of the law. The Philippines clearly recognizes the importance of citizen participation and empowerment and the role of the civil society. The Philippine Constitution states, Article 2, Section 23, The state shall encourage non-governmental, community-based or sector organizations that promote the welfare of the nation. Article 13, Section 15, The state shall respect the role of independent people's organizations to enable the people to pursue and protect within the democratic framework their legitimate and collective interests and aspirations through peaceful and lawful means. Article 13, Section 16, the right of the people and the organisations to effective and reasonable participation at all levels of social, political and economic decision making shall not be abridged. The state shall, by law, facilitate the establishment of adequate consultation mechanisms. That means ways that the people can talk to the government. They can go and discuss and complain or uh, that kind of thing. In the Philippines, prominent civil society organizations include National Secretariat for Social Action, Justice and Peace, NAS, that's NASA. NASA was created by the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, CBCP, in 1966. It focuses on poverty alleviation, democratic governance, ecology, and integrity of creation, peace, and development. Philippine Partnership for the Development of Human Resources in Rural Areas, FILDRA, was formally created in 1983 and is now a network of more than 70 NGOs involved in various development activities in rural communities all over the country. It is mainly involved in community organization and the provision of health, education and livelihood services to marginalized groups in the countryside. and then Philippine NGO Council on Population Health and Welfare, PNGOC, <coughs> excuse me, was founded on 24th of June, 1987. And it is composed of 97 member NGOs focused on different development concerns of the population, such as reproductive health, gender equity and equality, women and development, non-formal education, sustainable development, and HIV AIDS prevention and care. National Citizens Movement for Free Elections, NAMFREL. NAMFREL is the pioneer in election monitoring. Its goal is to ensure free, orderly and honest elections in the Philippines. It is a non-partisan organization with over 250,000 member volunteers from different religious, civic, business, professional, labor, youth, educational and non-governmental organizations. <clears throat> Since 1984, NAMPRAL has been accredited by the COMELEC to conduct the Operation Quick Count. It's 
picture of Namfrel at work there. Social institutions are structures or mechanisms of social order that govern the behaviour of the people in our society. Examples of social institutions are marriage and the institution of the family, religion and religious institutions, education and learning institutions, medicine and health care institutions, law and legal institutions, military and police, mass media, industry or business institutions, and civil society or non-governmental organisations. Social institutions ensure that certain rules govern human behaviour in a given society. Ultimately, social institutions should allow each and every person in the society to attain his full potential. Furthermore, social institutions must ensure that the following are given proper attention. Life and dignity of the human person. check that we've got the right one here, 35. Uh, social institutions ensure that certain rules govern human behaviour. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, social institutions should allow each and every person in society to attain his full potential. Furthermore, social institutions must ensure that the following are given proper attention. Life and dignity of the human person. Right. In these postmodern times, the world is becoming warped by materialism and a diminishing respect for human life. All human life is sacred, and each person, regardless of nationality, race, ethnicity, economic status, and e ideology, possesses dignity. Social institutions must stand their ground and defend precious human life and human dignity from the threats and attacks of groups condoning abortion, assisted suicide and capital punishment. Family, community and participation. Every person is a social being Social in, hence, social institutions must ensure that the family, which is the central so social institution, be supported and strengthened. Indeed, it is through the, the family that people learn about the larger society. Also, it is through the family that people discover and appreciate the common good and begin to think of the well-being of others. Rights of human beings and their responsibilities. Social institutions must protect the right of every person to life and ensure that all things necessary for a person to live decently is accessible. It is only when human dignity is protected can a vibrant community of persons be achieved. Hence, social institutions must not choose between protecting the rights of people and exacting from them the fulfilment of their obligations. Both rights and responsibilities are critical in the pursuit of a just society. Option for the poor and vulnerable. Social institutions are called to have a preferential option for the poor. The true measure of a just society is seen in how the least, the last and the forgotten are faring. The widening gap between the rich and the less fortunate should move everyone to reflect and reconsider 
to put the needs of the poor and the vulnerable first. <clears throat> the dignity of work and the rights of workers. Social institutions are called to respond to the challenge of considering first the rights of the workers rather than the bottom line. That means how much money is being made. Working with dignity means that workers' rights are protected as evidenced by decent and fair wages, right to private property, right to engage in other economic initiatives and others. When these rights are respected, then the economy protects human life, defends human rights and advances the well-being of all. Care for the earth. Social institutions must address environmental issues and persevere in protecting the environment and the planet. The present generation needs to ensure that future generations will still have an environment wherein they can grow, develop and sustain human life. The care of the planet benefits the whole human family. And I have a photograph of people tidying up the beach. So, please, students, now form groups composed of five members and complete the table below. On the left side are which social institutions you should focus on. Write specific activities done by social institutions which you think satisfies the goal. So three things that I have discovered about the civil society, media and the church. Put in the temple. Two things that I can do to support the advocacy of a specific non-governmental specific non-government organization and one goal that I hope to accomplish this year as a concerned citizen, a young person who is keenly aware of the various social ills that plague our society and with the desire to effect positive change. So three things you've discovered about civil society, media and church, two things I can do to support advocacy of a specific non-government organisation, an NGO, and one goal that I hope to accomplish this year as a concerned citizen. All right, so going on to page 37. Social responsibility. Social responsibility means that a person or an organization has an obligation to act to benefit society at large. Simply put, one's actions do not only affect oneself, but the society as well. Thus, everyone is called to consider always how one's choices and actions can affect others. While there might be trade-offs, for example, a community that choose, chooses to throw its trash in a landfill to make its own surroundings clean but consequently pollutes another area, social responsibility means maintaining the equilibrium between the two. It is a conscious decision not to act without thoroughly considering the consequences of one's actions to the society. There are two ways by which one can manifest social responsibility. First, a person or, or, or organization may refuse to engage in social 
socially harmful acts and secondly they may choose to pursue activities that directly advance social goals. Okay. One of the, let's check I did that one. Social goals, yeah. Trivia. One of the oldest non governmental organizations in the Philippines is the Philippine Foundation for the Rehabilitation of the Dis Disabled, PFRD. Established in 1949, PFRD is a non-profit organization dedicated to the promotion of measures to prevent disability, protect and rehabilitate the disabled, and equalize opportunities for disabled persons. Despite limited resources, PFRD continues to promote rehabilitation among the disabled and perseveres in becoming a catalyst for self-reliance programs for them. It also continues to spread awareness on disability issues in the country. <coughs> Please give examples wherein you can show your support for social institutions. Answer and submit. <laughs> Uplifting realizations. Social institutions mediate the rules that govern human behaviour. As members of the society, every individual is called to cooperate with and support the social institutions. Here are some possible ways in which you can show your loyalty to the communities where you belong, as well as respect those in authority. One, parents are tasked with the very important responsibility of taking care of and providing for the family. They constantly persevere to build an intimate community of life and love. Show your love and respect for them by seeking their counsel and wisdom, listening to and following their advice, and cheerfully fulfilling your chores. In doing so, you show support for the institution of marriage, embodied by your parents. Going on to page 38. The laws are intended to keep public order and ensure the community's safety abide by the curfew hours set by the barangay officials for young people in your community. Also, you are called to follow the waste segregation system implemented by your community. In school, you are called to follow the rules and regulations and to show respect to your classmates, teachers, staff and administrators. Also, you can show support for the service learning projects of your school by giving your best effort in every activity, not just for the grades, but also because of the belief that such activities will positively impact the larger community. <coughs> You can show your faith in action by being active in your parishes or religious organizations when you pray, worship and do things for the greater glory of God. You, not on, you do not only change others, you also become your best self. Picture of worship. 
Please do the points to ponder, page 38. 1. How can you show appreciation to non-government organisations who have been working so hard to keep the community a peaceful place to live in? <clears throat> Please answer and submit. 2. How do you show your appreciation to the staff secretaries, maintenance personnel and security personnel in the school? <clears throat> Answer and submit. 3. How can you show support for the temple, or mosque or the church? I insert the temple and mosque now. <clears throat> Answer and submit. Summative test. Identify the person or the concept that is being described by the following items. Write your answer on the space before the number. 1. This refers to the aggregate people living together in or more or less <coughs> together in a more or less ordered community. And two, this refers to the obligation of a person or organization to act to the benefit to act sorry to act to benefit society at large. Three, this refers to the kind of institution to which the Catholic Church belongs. Four, this refers to the third sector of society that is critical to ensure check and balance and bring order in the community. Five, this refers to the legal framework from which civil societies, advocacies and actions must operate. Six, this refers to the non-governmental organization established in 1966 that responds to poverty alleviation, excuse me, democratic governance, <clears throat> ecology and integrity of creation, peace and development. Seven, this refers to structures or mechanisms, social order, that govern the behaviour of the people in our society. It should be mechanisms of social, of social order <clears throat> that govern the behaviour of the people in our society. Eight, this refers to the non-governmental organisation that pioneered election monitoring and whose goal is to ensure free orderly and honest elections in the Philippines. 9. This refers to a network of 70 non-governmental organisations <coughs> involved in various development activities in rural communities all over the country. And 10. This refers to the aggregate of non-governmental organisations and institutions that manifest the interests and the will of citizens. Our social institutions need help and support to address the social problems of our society. As proactive members of the community, can you identify specific problems and propose solutions that a grade 9 student like you can do to help solve the problem. Please complete the chart below, answer and submit. <clears throat> so a column of concerns and then the specific problems, next column, and lastly the proposed solutions. And the concerns are life and dignity of the human person, family, community and participation, rights of human beings and their responsibilities, option for the poor and vulnerable, the dignity of work and the rights of workers, and care for the earth. Okay, so then you'd name a specific problem that's been brought up. 
and then a proposed solution for that. So now please answer the case study on page 41, situation and analysis. Situation 1, your barangay officials organised a relief drive to help provinces that were devastated by an earthquake. You asked your parents and siblings to help and they were supportive of the project. One day you saw a friend and asked him if his family is donating relief goods too. He laughed and told you that his family no longer donates nor participates in relief operations since they believe that it should be the government who must help and support the victims of natural calamities. <clears throat> he also told you that they have always suspected that most of their donations do not reach the intended recipients, but instead go to the pockets of corrupt people. How can you enlighten your friend and encourage him to help his fellow men? Situation 2, your school initiated a peace project which aims to promote peace and solidarity amongst Filipinos. You are very aware and saddened about the armed conflict in certain areas in Mindanao and look upon this project as a wonderful opportunity to enlighten people about the source of conflict and its possible solutions. <clears throat> You propose to your classmates to hold a symposium entitled Call for Peace in Mindanao, One Country, One People. However, some of your classmates are not too keen on the idea. They argue that there will always be conflict in Mindanao due to the differences, not just in religion, but also culture and political beliefs. Moreover, the national government and the military could not even bring peace to Mindanao, so it is preposterous to think that a group of students can do a better job at it. How can you engage your classmates to support the peace project? <clears throat> Please answer and submit. We're moving on. <clears throat> D, on page 42. Scaffolding for the performance task. Form a group composed of five members, interview a member of a non-governmental organization and ask him about his organization's advocacies as well as initiatives that respond to the country's social ills. Create a simple research paper about the importance and value of the civil society based on your data. Again, <coughs> form a group composed of five members, interview a member of a non-governmental organization and ask them about his organization's advocacies as well as initiatives that respond to the country's social ills. Create a simple research paper about the importance and value of the civil society based on your data. So, by the way, you can do that by email and by Facebook. There are many organizations and non-government organizations you can uh, contact on Facebook and then email or their website and set up some basic research questions from your own and, and, by, and submit to them and then do it to several uh, you know, organizations and people and see which ones come back to you. So that's the rubrics that the transcripts of the uh, interview is high quality, very clear, skillfully done, right down to transcript of interview has a low quality. It's less appealing and unskillfully done. And the purpose needs to meet the achieve the task objectives and successfully and convincingly. And right down to the output does not achieve that. Good. All right, so there we are, the end of lesson four. Summary the social institutions are structures or mechanisms of social order 
that govern the behavior of the people in our society. And then examples of social institutions are marriage and the institution of the family, religion, religious institutions, education and learning institutions, medicine and healthcare institutions, law and legal institutions, military and police, mass media, industry or business institutions, and civil society or non-government organizations. Social institutions must ensure that the following are given. <clears throat> Proper attention. One, life and dignity of the human person. Two, family community and participation. Rights of human beings and their responsibilities. Option for the poor and vulnerable the dignity of work and the rights of workers, care for the work, care for the earth, and there it is. Quote from Charles Darwin, if the misery of the poor be caused not by the laws of nature, but by our institutions, great is our sin. <clears throat> okay, closing prayer then. Reverently do we pray to thee, the holy and perfect one, we earnestly resolve to understand thy teaching and to daily tread thy path. So shall, like thee, we may attain the peace of Nirvana. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya. Do well, have a peaceful time, and study hard. Take care, Namo Buddhaya.